Hello, Mr. Fossell here to talk to you about your Fossell Vega. If you have a Fossell Vega V8, one of the things that you want to do to enjoy the vehicle is have your springs and shocks in good condition. Um, this uh, discussion will apply to the Fossell Vega FV series starting in 1955 through um, the HK500 V8 Coupe, the Fossell 2 V8 Coupe, and the Excellence uh, V8 four-door. When you have springs and shocks in good condition, they'll give, you'll, you'll experience a smooth, firm ride that's uh, well controlled with, uh, without bottoming out or wallowing. Uh, I have a Fossell 2 chassis HK2B116, and uh, it's got original springs on it and uh, aftermarket shocks. And uh, the ride left much to be desired. Um, uh, also, the, the vehicle was starting to sag a little bit. Uh, the springs were getting worn and tired. And so um, I decided to put uh, new springs and new shocks on it to improve these. This here is an original spring from a Foss L2. Um, and it has um, eight and three quarters coils that are evenly spaced. This is a brand new spring that was uh, made in the United States, unlike this spring which would have been made in France. This has got uh, eight and two-thirds coils to it, and uh, the, we tried to match the coil thickness as closely as we could. This is one half of a millimeter thinner um, because it was made in the U.S. to, uh, to U.S. Uh, specs. Um, <clears throat> Now you'll see that this has got uneven spacing of the spring coils. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what this does is it gives you a progressive spring rate. The spring rate is, is softer to begin with and then gets firmer and firmer as the spring gets compressed. And what this does is that, that initial softness gives you a comfortable ride, but the increasing firmness uh, helps the vehicle to, to not bottom out. Um, so this is very good for, uh, for highway comfort and just overall driving. Uh, progressive springs were not available or, or not, uh, yeah, they weren't available when the cars were made. <clears throat> In changing a spring, uh, it's actually quite easy to do on a Fossel, although it should only be done by an experienced professional. These springs that you, you see here are actually upside down because the top is flat and that way they can uh, stand upright. Uh, this is the spring seat that the, uh, is mounted to the lower control arm. So the spring mounts on this seat. And you can see here where the coil will come and, and uh, be placed on the spring mount. There are six bolts that hold this to the lower control arm. Here's one of the bolts. And uh, there is a, uh, a castellated nut with a, um, a cotter pin that will hold that in. Now, in order to, um, to remove and replace a spring, what you can do is get four 5 16 full thread screw or bolts, uh, nuts and washers, and you can remove the four outside bolts install these and fully tighten at the four corners, remove the two bolts in the center, and then just continuously loosen these four bolts. Just go loose up this one, and then loosen this one a little bit more, and then this one, and this one, and just go around, and the spring seat will drop, 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 until at about five inches or so, um, the spring will actually be loose and you can then just drop the, the, uh, the spring seat and pull the spring out. Um, one of the things that uh, I wanted to mention is that when, when this was cleaned off, all the grease was scrubbed off, there were remnants of black paint that were found on it. Uh, so that indicates that this was painted black by the factory. Uh, this car had never been restored, so it would never have been painted, this piece, uh, before. So we're going to go ahead and paint this uh, gloss black uh, to match the, uh, how the vehicle was made. 
uh, we're, we'll install the, we'll paint these parts and uh, we'll get a little bit of video of how they're installed. The spring gasket, uh, the one that goes at the top of the spring to isolate it from the frame, uh, these looked in very good shape, uh, the original rubbers. So I've gone ahead and cleaned them up and we'll reuse them. Uh, there was uh, nothing on the bottom of the spring between the spring and spring seat. Here's what the spring looks like uh, with the seat mounted and the four six inch bolt holding it up. And what we're going to do now is spend some time and, and tighten each bolt up a little bit and then go to the next bolt, tighten it up and continue that until the spring seat has compressed the spring up into the A-arm and then we can start to bolt it in. Here's what it looks like with about an inch to go. Here we're putting in a uh, one of the first bolts to uh, hold it in and then we'll put on the other side and then we'll just put in bolts as uh, we take out these guys that uh, pulled the spring pad up. These were reusing the original bolts. Um, they were in good shape and with a little wire brushing they uh, look like new. Now we're removing one of the long bolts and as soon as we have it out we'll substitute in one of the final short bolts. Okay, now that we've tightened up all the bolts that hold the spring pad on. What we're going to do now is install cotter pins here where for the uh, castellated nuts and that way they won't back out. To install a cotter pin you first have to line up the slot in the castle nut with the hole in the bolt. That looks about right there. Let's see if it'll go in. There and the go. other part of installing the castle nut or the cotter pin is to bend it over something like that. Well all the cotter pins are installed so the spring installation is complete on this side and we will now install the shock absorber. If you have any questions about Fossil springs, Fossil shock absorbers, or anything else Fossil, please send us an email. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.